Howdy there, I'm that indie games guy, and if you're here, then you're exactly like me. You love indie games and want to know what games will be coming out in the future. Or if you're watching this from the future, games that have already been released. This video, I'll explore a whole list of indie games that are set to be released shortly. These could be games you've already wishlisted, or unknown gems. Let me know in the comments below if you like the look of any of these games, and let the video commence. Starting us off this week is a game set within an apocalyptic wasteland. Zombies are roaming the land looking for fresh meat, and you've got to ensure you're not going to be the next meal on the menu. This is The Dead Await, a deck building RPG that will have you wandering the earth in search for loot, looking for answers, and maybe saving humanity as we know it. The map is fully giving me RimWorld vibes, and I think for an RPG, I'm all here for it. Being able to travel around in a top-down environment will really make the game feel more enclosed. It isn't like you'll be able to see a town for a mile away. You'll be searching like your life actually depends on it. Your group will include the survivors you've selected and picked up along the way. Decide who'll join you as combat could make or break if you survive. Playing in a turn-based combat style, choose the card to play and hope you'll be able to take down the dead before they injure you, or worse, take out one of your crew. The Dead Away is looking to be something different. Yes, it has its normal turn-based combat we all see these days, but the actual RPG side of the game has me excited to travel and see how I do when out on this road. And straight after, I know what you're thinking, Jack, we want another zombie game! And boy, can I deliver. Can you really ever have too many zombies? The answer is yes, but this week, it's like the dead are coming back for your bank accounts instead of your brains. This is Survival Nation, Lost Horizon. A survival top-down RPG. You'll need to survive in this overrun area, where it seems the population was infinite, as the hordes never stopped coming. The game is set in the same universe as the VR game Survival Nation, and they've decided to drop the headset and give us the experience where more people can give it a go. The VR version has really positive feedback, so hopefully it can be replicated. I like the idea of the servers in this game. They've said it's an online game where you can group up together and try to build a camp that you can defend or fight against each other. It seems very Rust or Ark-like, that the world is shared and you'll need to find a location that's good to camp with a lot of supplies, near other friends and somewhere that can actually be defended. If you do wish to play solo, you can just hop on a private server and explore at your own pace. Survival Nation Lost Horizon will be releasing into early access. Most of the features from the VR game will be in this version, but we'll be seeing frequent updates as the developers polish up the game and give us the zombie action we all crave. When you think about the time that goes into actually making a game, it's normally going to have taken years to develop and master, but this game right here has taken over a decade due to this beautiful and very unique art style of all of this being handmade stop motion models. This is Harold Halibut, a story rich adventure where everything you see has been created by someone and placed into the scene with purpose. Even if you see a little button on a desk, someone has created that using clay and added it perfectly to the environment, as the attention to detail on offer here for me is on a whole nother level. Harold is aboard an arc-like spaceship, which fled an Earth on the brink of a cold war. The ship landed on an alien sea, and 250 years later, your story begins. Anyone on board has given up hope of any life outside this ship. People have accepted fate, except one person, your boss who is hoping to relaunch the ship and begin a new life outside these metal walls. This excellently crafted story will have you experience the ups and downs of this metal box, and how the world around you can change by a single event. Harold Halibut has been in development for a third of my life, and you can tell that the love and effort that has been put into this game will be able to be seen wherever you look around the ship. The detail will be so next level. This unique experience deserves to be played by the masses, and I really hope this kickstarts the journey of these fantastic developers. Factory games can become so addictive. 
You start with nothing and after the first machine has been placed, you start a chain reaction that will slowly take over your life. This is Lifecraft, a sandbox automation building game that is all about starting with a single cell, not the one from Dragon Ball. You'll need to develop and unlock upgrades as you strive to become the perfect organism. Definitely not the one from Dragon Ball, just once again. The world of cells isn't easy. Have you ever seen cells at work? You'll need to ensure your little area is as safe as possible, as outside interferences might begin to creep towards you. I'm talking bacteria, viruses, and even wounds, which will all need to be fought and healed as you strengthen the body which you call home. The area you build will need to function like a human body. Make sure you have all the essentials to continue your adventure. Do you have enough oxygen coming in and the carbon dioxide leaving? Are you regulating temperature so certain cells can multiply? These will all be little things that you'll need to master for your cells to grow. Lifecraft is basically a factory game all about the body, giving us a fantastic way to learn how we all work inside. I know school gave us a lot of information, but unless you're interested in the subject, you normally forget some of these things. But what better way to learn than by playing a game? Imagine a world without dogs. If they just went extinct. No, wait, stop. Stop imagining it. It's too sad. So what we'll do instead is look at a game that's about this subject. This is Biogun, a side-scrolling adventure that is all about saving your best friend from the inside. A deadly virus is spreading called the Duper virus, and it's on the verge of having all canines go extinct. You'll play as Beck, a microscopic cell that has been injected into the dog, as we travel through all the different organs, saving them one at a time. I guess this week we just have a few games about cells. Travel through the body, aiding cells in side quests as we help strengthen and protect from the Duper virus. This Metrovania will have you battling bosses in places that you use every day. I'm talking your lungs, heart, and anywhere else that they have decided to call home. Biogun has taken the normal Metrovania style and given us a different setting to explore. Plus, the plot of losing your doggo best friend if you don't succeed is just too much. We all need to make sure that Beck completes the journey and gives our canines the chance to play catch once more. Spiders, probably the most feared common creature that resides in most homes. I don't mind them, but on occasion you see one that's bigger than the cup you use to escort them out of the property, and your heart does a little jump, but the spiders in this game, this is taking them to a whole new level. Welcome to Kill It With Fire 2, the sequel to the spider hunting game where you can use anything from a glass to a flamethrower, from a frying pan to a lightsaber. Those spiders never stood a chance. I played the original game and really enjoyed it. The spiders can be pretty tricky to find sometimes, but the overall game was a hoot to play. They also added a bunch of post-game content that elevated the game massively. So considering that they'll take everything that they did with the first and put it into the second, I know we have a good game on our hands here. Each level will have you looking for a certain spider. They'll be in plain sight or really tucked away in a corner. Find them and squish them. As the game goes on, spiders won't be so defenseless as it'll be time to take their revenge on you. It'll be two legs versus eight. Are you ready? Kill It With Fire 2 will learn from the first and during its early access period will add new levels, weapons and so much more. Also, for the very first time, they're adding a PvP mode where you'll be able to try and hide from the pesky humans trying to kill you. If you fancy a fun game that is just all about chaos, this will be perfect for you. I can't believe I missed this game for so long. Luckily for me, a viewer actually recommended this game to me on my April video, and now I get to add this beauty here. This is No Rest for the Wicked, an early access action RPG that's from the developers of one of my favourite games, the Ori series. No Rest for the Wicked is set within the year 841. The king has perished, and his untested son has taken the crown. 
At the same time, the pestilence, an unholy plague not seen for a thousand years has returned. Chaos has taken over these lands, but you'll remain one of humanity's last hopes. A Kerim, a sword protector against the pestilence, set off on your journey to clear the world once more. This game is a dark adventure, with most of the quests or little tasks set around a darker side of narrative. You'll have to ensure you can be that flame for these people who need you. Show them the correct way, so that they can once again go back to their normal lives. The world is beautiful, a handcrafted world which looks straight out of a painting. This gets me excited to see what the game has to offer us as we set out on our journey. No Rest for the Wicked will allow you and up to three friends to share in a full co-op experience. No dropping out or single player only bosses, this world can be explored completely in a group. If the adventure is getting a little bit too much for you, why not slow things down for a little while? Purchase a house and take some time to decorate. Have some R&R &R before you go off brutally slaughtering once again. Post-apocalyptic games normally have you searching a broken earth in search for potential loot, fighting zombies or weird creatures, or attempting to save humanity. But this next game has taken the concept of Waterworld and stuck it in an MMORPG for us to try and survive on the water after the seas have taken over everything. Age of Water is an early access boat survival game where you'll need to upgrade your boat to ensure you're not sinking into the deep blue sea. Explore the world at your own pace to find new settlements complete tasks for the inhabitants, and fight pirates who are trying to take your loot for themselves. Your boat will be your home for a while. Ensure you upgrade your existing ship, or just start over from fresh, as you try to make a unique ship to sail on these seven seas. Age of Water is an MMO, as once you feel comfortable on the sea, you can start to fight other players to get better loot for your crew. The PvP areas will be hot zones, as you'll see people smuggling goods. Do you let them be, or do you take the goods for yourself? This clearly is the age of water. Internet cafes have never been a big thing over in the UK. Sure, we probably had a few back in the day, but I've never visited one or seen one out in the wild. But they are a massive success in a lot of countries, and now it's time for us to build our own and see how successful we could be. This is Internet Cafe Evolution, a management building game that has you run your own store, deciding what you have to offer and making sure that we keep on top of all those big trends. It's down to you to decide what goes where and how to price renting the computers to keep us in business. Do you think a gaming cafe is the best? Well, you'll need to make sure all the PCs can run the latest games. Think a cinema would be a good idea in the corner? Make sure you have enough seats and the right permits to make it happen. This cafe is bound to become the number one place to chill if you keep up with the world around you. Internet Cafe Evolution is all about understanding what the customer wants. Yes, you could just build whatever you think looks great, but you might find yourself restarting after the business fails. If it was me, I'd be more than happy with just a decent gaming computer and some fast food that I can order. I'll be there all day. And now we move along to the final game on the list. And this one is for all the couch co-op gamers out there that's looking for some extra spicy chaos. This is Ready Steady Ship. A game that is all about getting the goods to the correct place by using the conveyor belts in front of you. But these games are never that simple. As the levels go on, what was once a peaceful game starts to add extra risks that will make you want to cry as you reset over and over and over. You'll need to place the conveyor belts down to create the most effective system, but effective isn't always enough. Sometimes you'll need to add a little extra crazy to the mix, as you'll be jumping on roofs of skyscrapers, drifting forklift trucks around obstacles, or just trying to avoid a big pit of acid. What's a few broken arms or lost employees, eh? 
Ready Steady Ship is a easy to pick up but hard to master game. Me and my wife love these types of games for the crazy over the top wacky experience that we have with them. I can see this becoming a favourite like moving out as soon as we play this one. Definitely a must if you enjoy the chaos of a couch co-op game. And that for me is the end of all the picks of indie games being released this week. Let me know in the comments if you've got your eye on any of these games or if I've missed any that you're really excited about and I'll catch you all next time. Bye bye!